Hello, this is Velma Hagar with Hidden Treasures in Secret Places. And here's looking at you, kid. Mm. I hope you've learned to enjoy coffee. <laughs> you know, I have to tell you this little story. I didn't, you know, sometimes things come to your mind and so I'm gonna share it with you. My mother and my dad were both avid coffee drinkers. But my, my mother told me that when she married my dad, she did not like coffee. And my dad used to love it. And she said, they lived in San Francisco at the time. This was, I was born in San Francisco, so this must have been around the time she was pregnant with me. And we never lived there long after that or before that. So it was right around that same time. But she said, my dad was working in the shipyards in San Francisco during the war. And um, this woman that lived upstairs from them in an apartment, they lived in a real meager little apartment in San Francisco. And she said to my mother, honey, let me tell you something. Stop and drink a cup of coffee with your husband. It is a very bonding thing to do. Just do it. And so my mother, in, in her efforts to try to tame that wild animal she married, <laughs> I love that because, you know, it never did work for her. But, <laughs> but she made a decision to drink coffee with my dad. And that decision, she ended up loving it like I do. I mean, my mother would... Her and I would, she lived up here at Ironwood with me the last 12 years of her life because I, I was alone. And after her, uh, my stepfather died, she moved here with me, not in my house, but next door. My brother bought her a condo up here next to me. That was Sammy, yes. And so she used to, I used to go out to the pool and she'd say to me, you want me to bring us a good happy cup of coffee out to the pool? And I'd go, yes, mom, bring the coffee. She'd go in and she'd make a cup of coffee like nobody made coffee. Oh my God my Italian mother, you know, she learned how to doctor it up and oh my God, it was always so good. And I loved that coffee. So that's how I began to drink coffee was because my mother and dad both, they savored it. So I started drinking it at a very young age. I am probably addicted. <laughs> I don't deny it. I, I would as I, you know what, sometimes in the morning, I'm telling you, the joy for me of getting out of bed is getting a cup of coffee in the morning. I lay there and I think I'd love to lay in, but no, you know what? I want to get up and have my coffee. So if you don't drink coffee, if you haven't learned to enjoy the value of what coffee does in your life, I recommend that you try it. And you know, if you don't like it, my, my daughter-in-law comes over and she goes, unless my coffee tastes like a candy bar, I don't want it. So I make her coffee taste like a candy bar when she gets it. I put all kinds of flavorings and, you know, sweetenings and creams and whipped cream and all the stuff that makes it palatable. And, you know, you could do hot chocolate too or, or hot tea, but it just isn't the same. Look at me. I should be selling coffee. You know that? Because I'd probably make money on it. Okay. This morning, I'm going to finish what I started the other day. Look at this guy. Look, look, look. How long has it been since you've guys seen him? He's always here, but he's laying by my side. And see, he's kind of sleepy right now. He, you know, my my gal that comes to the house to give him a bath, I have an Auntie Ruby come, and she does him here at home. And because of the lockdown, she's so busy, people are calling and want her to come to their house and do it. And so I ended up giving his appointment away to Stacy with her Tonja because Tonja was... Oh, mama mia, Tantra was a mess. And so I gave his appointment away. So I said, all right, I'm going to bathe him. And so I bathe him with my molten brown. And I don't know if you know molten brown. Molten brown's very expensive, and I love it. And I ordered it from London. And <laughs> so he got bathed with molten brown. This dog is spoiled, right spoiled, but worth every bit of it. Hey, Google, play Yanni. I don't know why that Google is doing that. But when the clouds are over, Google has trouble... I don't know why, but it stops playing. It's supposed to play all day, but you know, and even now, if I tell it, it probably won't. Okay, well, we're gonna do without Yanni today because I promised you the other day that I was going to finish something I was talking about if you ask a yes or no question uh, to God, he'll answer you very easily. And I and I, I mentioned that that is a very kind of a an immature way to do it for people that don't hear God well or haven't practiced hearing him well but it still works. So, and then I told you I was gonna tell you another way. Now I have done this on a video before, but I have so many more followers now, and unless you've gone back and watched them, you haven't heard it. So I'm gonna give it to you again. 
There are three things that must be present to know that you heard from God. You know, if somebody comes up to you and they say, they give you a prophetic word, for instance. You know, there are a lot of churches that give prophetic words, and there's a lot of people that give them. And sometimes we even give them without knowing it. You know, we'll say something to somebody flippantly, and it was God using us to, to tell them something. So, you know, it, however you receive that word, you know, first of all, the word has to be tested, you know. So in other words, if it comes to naught and they said it, then it wasn't God. If it comes, if it happens, it could be God that was telling them that. Okay, so now here we go. There are three things that must be present before you accept any uh, life-changing prophecy that you act upon, I should say. So let's say someone comes up to you and they say something like, I think God is calling you to be a missionary in Africa. That is a real life-changing thing to say to somebody. And before you take them at their word, this is there's three things that must be available. First of all, you have to have a witness in your own spirit. In other words, you have to say something like, you know, that's interesting because I've always wanted to be a missionary in Africa. So there's your witness. Or you might say, whoa, that never even entered my mind. I'm not even interested in that. That's an answer too. That's a negative answer. And the next thing, it has to be something scriptural. It can't just be something like, God wants you to have a Cadillac. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you could probably find something in the gray area of the Bible that would, that would um, uh, cause that to be adequate for scriptural. Like God says, I wish above all things that you would prosper and go, be in good health. So you could say, well, you know, he says he wants to prosper. You could do that. But basically, that is not the way this works, okay? So... It has to be scriptural. And you say to yourself, well, you know what? Going to Africa as a missionary is very scriptural. God says to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Okay, so now you've got two out of the three things that are needed in order to know that it's God. But the third thing, and this is probably the thing that more people miss than anything else. You got six kids and you, and you got to take care of them. That's called consequences or circumstances. I mean, consequences too. <laughs> That's called circumstances. So your circumstances have to be right. And your circumstances to go to Africa are not right. You got kids to take care of. Okay, so now, you get it? That's how it works. So here it is. You have to have a witness in your own spirit, number one. It has to be scriptural, number two. And your circumstances have to be right. Number three. Now, if even one of those things is missing, do not proceed. Do not proceed. Now, let's say that it isn't something that somebody's telling you as a prophetic word, but it's something that you want to do. Something you want to do. Is it scriptural? You obviously have a witness in your spirit if you want to do it. God works in you to will and to do his good pleasure. But... You don't have any money. You don't have any, I mean, you don't have any way to get it. You don't have any way to do it. Circumstances. Now, can we jump over circumstances? Oh, yeah, we can jump over them. But you got to get the circumstances right before you do it. They can be done. This one can be done when the circumstances aren't right. you got to work on the circumstances if that's all that's missing. For instance, if you wanted to open a business and it costs half a million dollars to, to open it, and you've always wanted to do it. Yeah, God would want you to get your own business. I know that. But you don't have any money. So rather than waste time dreaming, get busy and raise the money, or go make your tents or do something else until the time that you do have enough money to do it. Is that clear? Make sense? And you know, when people say they can't hear God, I go, oh, yeah, you can hear him. And you know, you can use your head to hear him. You know, just with those three things, use your head and figure it out yourself. Did you hear God? Because God, when God guides, God provides. Now, did you hear that? When God guides, God provides. If there's no provision for you to do something, then think twice. It could be, and I do want to say this too, your vision could be for another time. 
you know, some, and there's a time and a season for everything under the sun. So your vision, it may not be that it's, that it's null and void. It may be that you've got the vision, but it's not for now because everything isn't lined up. Does, you know, does that make sense? So make sure things are lined up before you proceed. Because things that, now, just because you went into something and it failed doesn't mean you didn't hear God. It means that you had something you needed to learn from that failure. You know, a failure is one of the best learning processes you will ever get. When you, when a person fails at something and they get up and they start again, I'm going to tell you what, you got an expert on your hands. You got someone who knows how to navigate through troubled waters. Does that make sense? I wanted to do a thing on my books. I'm gonna do them, I'm gonna do a longer one today, so what? You know, I'm always telling you about my book and I never hardly show it to you. I'm pretty proud of my book. And, and the next time we do a video, I'm gonna tell you about these pearls too, because the pearls are very interesting. Now, in my book, there, you have one day at a time. You only read this much every day. It's, it's in the form of a devotional. And it tells you uh, something encouraging and enlightening that comes out of the word. It's not churchy, it's very down to earth, and you'll love it. It's also filled with beautiful pictures of the desert. Let me just show you one so we can get a night. I should do April's, but I won't bother looking because I know I'm running long. But you guys, what are you going to be doing? You don't have anything else to do but watch. I mean, what are you going to do today? You're locked in your house, right? Okay, here, here's one of the pictures. And, of course, that's an up-close shot of a cactus. But there's beautiful pictures of the desert throughout. At the beginning of each new month, you will find a beautiful picture. It's, it, the book looks beautiful sitting on your coffee table. It's, it's real high quality. The paper is like sand. It's like, it looks like sand inside. Oh, there's, an, oh, there's another picture of another cactus with a bloom on it. I, I went walking today. You know that every cactus blooms. I do love cactus. Okay, so that's my book. The hard copy is $29. The soft copy is $20. The only thing missing in the soft copy, of course, is it has a soft outer shell. It also doesn't have any pictures in it. So that's the difference. And then my sister's book, and I want you, if you haven't got this, this is only $20, you guys. It is uh, Blinds, Patches, and Twine. It's a soft cover. It's not real thick, but it is such good reading. These are all pictures of the Hagar family all over the, the well, the front. I thought I had the back too, but inside you will also find a few little, uh, I think there's some pictures, a few little pictures of the family. Yeah, there are. And so as she tells a story, she puts a picture with it. And it's beautifully written. She is, she's a totally different kind of writer than I am. So this is the family memoirs and it's $20. You can, you can text me, private message me, and I will send you one of these. And you know, if you get the two together, it would regularly be 49, I'll sell you the two for 35. So you let me know and I will send you, I will send you, I'm sorry, both a soft copies for for, uh, for 35, the two. The hard copy, I can't do that for that because then I really lose money, you guys. I pay $23 to print these. They're beautiful. Everybody asks me why they're expensive. The only four star I got on Amazon was a guy from, from Down Under, uh, Australia. He had to pay $49 for the book because he was in Australia and he gave me a four because it was too expensive. I go, Oh, mamma mia. He said, the book is great, but it was too expensive, so he gives me a four. Otherwise, I'm a pure, straight, five-star rating, and I have a whole bunch of ratings. So in my sister's book, you're going to love it, both of them. So $35 for two soft copies, and I'll even ship them for that, so I won't charge you shipping. This is $29, and I have to charge you $3 to ship it. It's hard copy, and it's, it's a beauty. Okay, or you can buy these independently for $20 a piece, the two soft, my sister's and mine. So you know, or one, if you just want one of them. So let me know. Okay, you guys, I really went a long time. I really went a long time. Listen for God in the way I taught you how to do it, okay? It really works. Okay, till next time, Velma Hagar. Bidding you a blessed day. Here's looking at you, kid.